What? What's going on YouTube? This is Eric Kelly, aka The Tech Gentleman, bringing you guys another video. And today I'm going to be going over Android Nougat on the Verizon S7 Edge. This is the beta version of it, so it's going to be a little janky, but bear with me. It's got some crazy new features in it. So without further ado, let's talk tech. So you might or might not have heard, but Samsung is actually getting started pretty early with their Android 7.0 Nougat rollout. And they are starting the rollout or prefacing it with a beta for the S7 and S7 Edge. So if you have an S7 or S7 Edge on Sprint, on T-Mobile or Verizon, you have the option um, a couple of days ago to opt into the beta program. Uh, I don't know who AT&T pissed off, but they are eligible if you have one of those devices. You aren't eligible for the beta. I don't know who AT&T made mad, but they're excluded. Also, if you were one of the very few lucky people to snag one of the special edition S7 edges like the Olympic one or the Injustice one, you have no access to the beta. Kind of sucks, but you know, that's how it goes. Um, but also, you had to be pretty quick to get into the beta. I was waiting for the beta to go live. I had the app installed and I still was excluded. But well, there's a, where there's a will, there's a way. And I was actually able to sideload uh, Nougat on my S7 Edge. So I've got the, uh, the Pixel Launcher installed just because it's something to do. So you'll see I'm running Android 7.0 on my S7 Edge. This isn't a fluke or, you know, some kind of sham or anything like that. And there are other videos out. Um, and since I've been trying this out, I just had to put together a video, just kind of give you guys an idea of what to expect. Because there are a lot of changes that are coming to uh, S7 Edge. Um, and they are heavily geared, as far as I can tell, around battery life, performance, and just control over your device. Now, if you had a Note 7, a lot of things are going to seem uh, pretty familiar to you, but um, to us S7 and S7 Edge users, these are going to be um, pretty great features. So I guess to start off, um, we finally get the new uh, always on display. So as you can tell, it actually has you know more icons. The previous always on display from the S7 or the original one didn't allow you to actually show third party apps uh, notifications here and now you know pretty much everything shows up if you got hangout messages um, you see I got Gmail Instagram and I have eight others sadly these aren't actionable you can't do anything with them but it just gives them a little bit more functionality and gives you a better idea of what um, notifications you have left so if you pop into the lock screen here you're getting met with these full bleed um, uh, notifications and the notifications on 7.0, if you haven't played around with them, they are ridiculous. I find myself just kind of just entrenched and getting lost in the notifications. There's so there's so much information in them and so much you can do in them now. So pop, go ahead and pop into the phone. And as you can see, I have a lot of notifications. I got several uh, email accounts showing up here. Uh, I've got some you know, from Instagram, ESPN, and normally these would be, you know, kind of hectic to go through, but I split, but you can actually just manage a lot of stuff from the notification here. So as you can tell, I can actually expand out and actually, actually scroll down my emails for this account. And so I see, you know, I've sent myself a couple of dummy emails. And if I wanted to, I can actually drop down further with the, you know, the old school, pinch the zoom um, or there's actually a little carrot here that you can see that you can actually tap and manually expand these notifications you have it for each one of them and since these are just dummy emails there's no body in them but like this one here from Jay Will um, you can see the content of that message and I actually get some quick options here so I can either delete or I can reply and I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and you get the option to undo like the old school Gmail. But that's pretty cool. That helps you um, kind of just manage. If you if you want to 
just kind of power through a lot of notifications you can actually just get into your shade and just start managing notification you can swipe for later delete or i can actually type a reply and for a gmail it actually send you to the app but if i go to see like an actual messaging app like so telegram we got a crap load of telegram messages we got two different threads if i hit the little carrot here i get an actual view of some of the threads of course it's not going to show me 102 of them but i can actually reply and i actually type out my reply there and i can send it without ever ever leaving the notification shade so that's pretty cool um and that goes that same uh enhanced functionality um and extra information is shown in all the notifications and that's just the 7.0 feature that i want to show you guys um let's see what's next um, if you haven't noticed, the color scheme has gotten a lot brighter. Um, it's a lot of whites and blues, like if you go to the settings here. All white. And luckily on, on Samsung, you have the option to add themes. On the beta, you can't really install any other themes right now. This is the only one. But, um, of course, once this fully releases, you'll have access to the full theme store. And, let's see, I guess one more thing while I'm here. Just want to touch on the new quick toggles so you notice you have a lot more quick toggles and you can actually there uh you know show up in pages now so you can scroll through them uh, but you still can edit the top six of them here that show up so that's pretty cool you got your quick ones or you can have access to all of them without having to go into a secondary menu um, another interesting feature here is this search so you can actually search for devices or search for things like apps so if I type in like face, um, it'll go through some of the applications, uh, calendar, contacts, music, internet, files, just pretty much anything that it can, you know, your phone can ever associate with that word, which is pretty cool as well. Um, and that's an, another beta feature, apps crashing all the time. And it actually isn't that bad, to be honest. Uh, and this is a Instagram notification where you can actually see like the full, you know, full message, a full picture, whatever from Instagram. I like the notifications. That's going to be cool. Um, the next thing I want to go over, just a couple of just one off options. So if we go into display, uh, you have the blue light filter. So I cut that on. You can see it kind of gives like an orange tint to your display. I suppose to filter out blue light, which, you know, puts strain on your eyes and things like that. And you can actually go in and adjust like the opacity, like the intensity of it, make it like really super blue deficient, kind of keep it in the middle. You can actually schedule it. So if you want to, you know, kind of automatically pop on and pop off, you can do that. That's cool if you care about that kind of stuff. Um, some of the more interesting features that we got, especially from the Note 7, was the ability to um, adjust your screen resolution and just have granular control over your device's performance without needing root or any kind of special apps. So this is one that I really like. Um, I have the option to just select my screen resolution. So the S7 Edge has a 2K display. I can run it at 2K or I can run it all the way down to 720p if I wanted to. Um, and you will just reap the benefits, you know, the lower the resolution, the uh, better the battery savings. And to me, to be honest, I think 1080p just all around is good. But if you want to do any kind of VR or something like that, you definitely need the higher resolution of the 2K. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. You get a little bit of battery savings from lowering your resolution. And really, you can't tell when you're around a UI. Um, 1080p looks just fine. And you also have the quick double tap of the, um, the multitasking key to flip through apps. That's a new good feature. And you also have the, uh, the Android version of multitasking so that's good because uh, the android was uh, actually supports more apps so i was happy to see that as well we can slide down to fully expand that app and let's see so we got the always on and we actually have some more features on the always on so you now we can set a schedule and i can't remember if that was in there before but you have more layouts you got a lot more layouts. You can do the pictures now. Um, you can also select your content that you want to show, which is the same as always. 
And let's see. Just digging into some more kind of things that I saw while powering through. So you have the option to kind of truncate your notifications to the three dots once they go over three, which is just kind of an aesthetic thing if you don't like seeing your notification bar just, you know, filled up with apps. You know, you can turn that on. I like to get a glance or get a good idea of what all applications I have some notifications for. So I like to keep that off. I don't care. You know, I feel like that's what it's for is to show me stuff. So that's cool. Um, let's see. There is this advanced feature section, which is on the original one, but now you actually have this video enhancer mode. You can kind of get an idea of what it does, kind of pop it off and everything kind of, you know, you kind of lose some dynamic range, pop it on, you get a little bit more detail in the darks. I would venture to say this is supposed to be as close to HDR as you can get with this panel, you know, the Note 7 was supposed to have HDR support. Um, I, I guess it does the job all right. I haven't really noticed a difference because if you have it on, it just automatically flips on once you enter any of these apps. But without having, you know, something side by side to see or being able to flip it on and off real time, it's kind of hard to notice the difference. I just keep it on. Um, they say it's supposed to give you you know, enhance the image quality and sound quality of your videos to enjoy brighter and more vivid colors and clearer sound. I guess so. I don't know. I think it's going to really depend on the, you know, source or the, uh, or, you know, what you're listening through. If you're listening through crap headphones, I don't think anything can really help get you clearer or, you know, higher quality sounds. You know, if you're listening on crap, you're just going to be able to hear crap. So, <laughs> I'm getting kind of to the end of my list of features here. Uh, the next section is device maintenance. This is a big overhaul. Um, normally, you would have these sections kind of separated out, and there is some redundancy. You have you have actually have a storage section in the main list here, but they've kind of consolidated basically everything about your device's performance. So you got your battery, performance mode, storage, and RAM. You have sort of like a one-click button supposed to go through and clean up everything and they're nice enough to give you a grade on your uh, optimization or your performance the most useful thing to me um, actually comes in the battery section so you have some modes so you have your mid and your max as far as battery saving so right now I have it off so I'm wide open everything I have the option to run full 2k resolution processor up to 100% and all that stuff if we go to the mid, you'll see they kind of have some default settings for mid, so they limit your maximum brightness to 80%. Uh, screen resolution drops down to full HD. You still don't get a CPU limiter. Um, they do limit background network usage, and the uh, always display is turned off. And it's interesting because they give you an actual kind of quote on how many, like how much more time you will get. So it says if I apply these, I'll get 25 more minutes, which is kind of cool. And you also have the option to go in here and just hand jam it yourself. You can just manually tweak all these things and kind of create your own mode, if you will. So you can turn on CPU limiter if you want. You can have it leave on, always on display. Kind of customize your power profile, which is pretty cool. Um, I have to say, if you're wondering, the battery on here has been crap. And it's really because you just lack the ability to optimize a lot of apps. So... Let's see. Try to find the little optimization area. Uh, while I'm here, this is another interesting area. They actually break down battery usage per hour per app. So you can actually select an app and save power. It says tap save power to stop these apps from using your battery while you're not using them, which is pretty cool. So I think between these features and just the extra uh, you know, enhanced dose mode and stuff like that from Nougat, that I really have high expectations as far as battery life um, from the S7 Edge once it gets uh, the official release. So we'll look again in performance mode, and these are just some more kind of pre-canned uh, settings that you can that you can use. Like they have game mode, where if we can turn on, I think I'm locking up. Yes, yeah, the beta, so it's locking up. Give me a second. Oh yeah, so it's asking me to restart the app. 
and it fires right back up. Like I said, in performance mode, um, it just doesn't want to show performance mode options right now. We'll skip. We'll let it crash out and do whatever. All right, so back to settings and device maintenance. So like I say, in performance mode, you can just kind of tweak uh, what features you have on and off and prepackage them, assign them names, game mode, entertainment mode, that kind of stuff. Uh, you have a RAM manager, which I was able to get it to clear like over a gig and a half of RAM earlier. Um, let's see, right now it's saying that I could hit this button and get back a gig and a half of RAM, even though technically I have um, over a gig free. Of RAM, which is pretty cool. I don't know what this reserved RAM is. I assume that's for things like the double tap to open the camera functionality and stuff like that. But um, if I go ahead and hit this, let's say clean now, let's say cleaning, basically go through and shut down these apps, clear them out of RAM. And now it says I have a gig for you. It says one point one and a half gigs have been cleared and available space is a gig, even though it didn't add up. I don't know if that's just because this is a beta or if they're using some kind of funky math, but we have half a gig or 600 meg free and you clear out a gig and a half. It shouldn't be a gig free, but whatever. That functionality is there. Um, storage, they got a little, you know, cleaning option there as well. And the last thing that I just kind of want to go over was just the granular battery controls. So if I go into battery usage, um, you have the option to really come in and control what's using your battery. And they also give you a lot of information about what's using your battery. So in the beta, none of these apps are optimized. And if we look back at this uh, battery usage chart, it gives me the percentage of my battery that's being used. And also you can see the screen is way down here. I had it on for two and two hours, 44 minutes, and I kind of been throwing it on the charger every now and then. But the system, because I haven't been able to optimize a lot of these apps for battery usage, uh, they've been demolishing the battery. So, especially the Android OS. So once we get the official release, I think that stuff will improve. And like I say, this device has a 3,600 milliamp hour battery in it. I have really high expectations once you apply all these tweaks and these controls to your battery, um, being able to basically run your phone how you want, limit the screen brightness to 80%, limit the CPU to 70%, drop down to 1080p for just, you know, going through web browsing, Instagram, going through the UI. I think those things will add up tremendously. Um, a lot of people are already, you know, talking about how great a battery life they get. Hey, one of my homies tell me he gets eight hours of screen on time. I'm like, that's insane. Like I can never even approach that on any device. Um, but there are some people getting crazy battery stats like that, and it's only going to get better once uh, 7 that all comes out. So um, this has just been a quick look at Nugget on the Verizon variant of the S7 Edge, aka King Fingerprint Magnet. Um, if you guys got any questions, uh, always hit me up in the comments, like, subscribe. Um, you know, just hit me up. I like talking to you guys and answering questions and just getting some insight from your perspective. But until next time, guys, talk to you later. Peace.